Okay, so today is my first video in a 10 part series and this is a little bit different than how Canadian government works. I decided to focus a 10 part series on municipal governments for a number of different reasons. The first reason is that as much as people don't know about the federal government, the provincial government, people have even less of a clue about municipal government. I, no. I can see from some of the comments in the Toronto mayor's race that some of the people who even are involved with city politics have no clue how city politics, how municipal government in Canada works. So that that's one reason. The other reason is it's actually the level of government in Canada I have the most qualifications to speak about. I have a master's degree in local government and I'm qualified to speak about the federal and provincial, but local is the most, is the level of government I'm most qualified to speak about. So, where do you begin? Well, I think the good way to begin is what is a local government, what is a municipality? It's because we e hear these terms and many people use the terms interchangeably. That's not true. Um, a local government is simply any government with authority which is less than the entire country or the entire province. A municipality is a form of local government which is multifunctional. Now multifunctional is the opposite of a special purpose body. So a municipality is like the city of Montreal is a municipality or the city of Toronto is a municipality. A school board is a special purpose body. A police services board is a special purpose body. These are local governments that only serve one function designated to it. Local health boards, single purpose bodies for the most part. So these are two separate terms and they, they should be treat, treated as separate terms. Now most people are taught that there are three levels of government in Canada. Technically that's true, legally that's not true. There are two levels of legal governments in Canada, the federal and the provincial. Municipalities are what we call creatures of the provinces. Municipalities are created by the province and could be destroyed by the province as well. So if for example, tomorrow the city, the province of Ontario wants to do away with all municipalities. They could. It would be well within its jurisdiction to do so. I don't think it would happen, but it would be well within the jurisdiction of the province to do so. If a p municipality gets into significant debt, now there will be incessional municipal finance, but the province is responsible for that debt if the municipality goes bankrupt. Um, because they are creatures of the province. The other interesting thing about municipalities is that they were actually the first form of self-government in Canada. Um, the first municipality was in was created in 1785 in St. John, New Brunswick by royal charter under British law. Uh, they were around the same time what's called the courts of quarter session in Ontario which was a they were courts but they also had taxation powers for municipal functions um, and that was the case in Ontario until 1849 with what's called the Municipal Act of Upper Canada or if you want to go by the more commonly used name the Baldwin Act and the Baldwin Act more or less remained in place until the 1930s, 1940s, where you had a progressive movement in North American municipal politics, which created additional um, restrictions on municipalities because of corruption in the states. If you see Gangs of New York, that's a great movie that shows the corruption that was going on in the states. So. In Canada, the, the corruption never really took place to the same degree as the states, but the progressive movement definitely did make an impact in, in Ontario. 
uh, with the creation of what's called boards of control. These are usually very small boards, usually make up of three, four, five members. And their role is single function. They're, they're, they're part of council, they act as an executive of council, and their role is mainly management of finances and personnel. So that, that when you hear about boards of control, that's what they were. Uh, most of them are being abolished. There's one remaining in Ontario, in London, Ontario, and that will be abolished at the end of 2010. They've actually changed that. So you had the progressive movement, which definitely left it mar its mark on municipal politics and municipal government. Um, you ha also had a few other movements which definitely left its mark on municipal politics and government. Um, you had a, a large number of consolidations in the early 70s, 80s, and they if you look at rural Ontario, a lot of the small municipalities in southern and central Ontario were amalgamated at that time. Started again under Mike Harris in the 90s. Um, so you did have a number of different reforms of government. But for the most part, municipalities have been changed a lot since the 30s, um, in Ontario at least. Now these videos, I'm going to be talking about Ontario for the most part. There's a few on places outside Ontario, but for the most part we're talking about Ontario because that's what I know the, know the most par about. So that's basically it for an introduction. I'm hoping to do it two times a week, possibly Monday, Fridays, I'm not sure yet. Uh, the best way to get all my videos on municipalities is to subscribe, uh, shameless ploy. I will be doing three case studies uh, throughout, and I will be talking about different arrangements for government, of municipal government. So this is my first video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a great week, and my next video should be up probably by the end of this week, the early weekend. Ciao.